Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, today, I'm gonna take a look at some Model 3 data and figure out how much are people willing to pay for all the different parts of the world. So stay tuned for that coming up. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Ben Sullins, and this is Teslanomics, where we decode the data behind Tesla. If you're new here, I'd love for you to join us. Go ahead and click subscribe down below, and then each time you log in, you'll get some interesting analysis about Tesla. I also do a live Q&A on Mondays where I talk about recent news. So I would love for you to join me there by clicking subscribe, which doesn't cost you a thing. If you're already a part of the family, please like and share this video, and that will help grow the community so we can really dig in and get a better understanding of what's going on and how this company changing our world. Okay, let's dive into the data now about the Model 3 budgets. So Model 3 track credit info is a great place to enter your data and get estimates about your Model 3 reservation. It also helps people like me who then use that data to do analysis and look at the market in a broader context. So I'll show you how Model 3 Tracker works so you can see where I'm getting my data. Then I'm going to dive in and show you some analysis I did. So here we are on model three tracker.info. And if you don't have a login, you can go register one right there. And for me, if you already have one, you after you do that, you go ahead and log in and you get to the dashboard here. And there's a lot going on on this page, but basically what you get is essentially some stats about the tracker itself. You can see that we're almost at 8,000 records and 10,000 different people have actually created accounts. Uh, and down below you have some interesting stats and you have stuff about uh, overall what the community has put in in terms of the upgrades and nearly bare bones and autopilot and self-driving and all these different features that you can choose as well as the Model 3 reservation tally down below. So all of this data here is collected by you entering a record. So when you go, you can click add new record, or if you already have one and maybe you need to update or change some, change your mind about something, you can go do so by clicking on your record and then the vehicle. So here is where you enter your information and it talks about the region you're in, the country, the city, et cetera, as well as are you an existing owner and how did you make your reservation? But the most interesting stuff I feel is down when you go to your configuration. So you can see what the options are. Now, the guys that built this website have a pricing model that they've developed and it's based on Model S pricing with some other stuff that's using historical averages and those things. But you go through and you choose all the options that you want. You can see I actually prefer mine fairly straightforward uh, with the exception of a couple upgrades. And then down at the bottom, you get to enter your budget. Now this is the data we're gonna be looking at today. Your budget versus your estimate. Now, not all of the data has it in USD, so I had to do some conversions, but I'll explain that when we get there. So once you have your entry and you have your data in Model 3 Tracker.info, I and other folks as well can go in and do an export of that data. So once you export that data, you get it in Excel. And then from there, I use Tableau software, which is a data analysis tool that I've been using for years to actually dig in and explore the data. It's just kind of a fun way to, to look at the data and see what it's trying to say. So let's switch over here to Tableau where I have my Model 3 Budgets Estimate Dashboard. Now on this dashboard, I have a lot going on. There's several different charts here. And in the top left to start, what I have are the median budget by country. When you look at this dashboard, you have the color-coded countries here, which have the median budgets. And I use median because that is, uh, you know, it filters out any kind of noise in the data, any kind of really high or really low estimates or anything like that. Then on the right, you have a histogram. Now, I like to think of this as a distribution. What you see each bar in this bar chart are the number of people that have their budget. And I've converted all of these to USD. What I did is, let's say you were in South Africa. I looked up the currency for South Africa and then I got, as of last week, the conversion rate to USD. That way, when I color code this, it's all commensurate, right? We're all using the same kind of metric and it's USD. So that's how I got actually those numbers to do the coloring of the map. Now on the histogram, what you see are bins. And so each bin, you can kind of tell by the bottom here, are about $5,000 bins or ranges. So when you see a USD budget of 40K or that bin, and you see 100 people that have put in, that's basically where their budget falls in, what you're getting is 40 to 45,000. These are $5,000 bins. 
then you can see overall like for all of Earth and all the all the entries that we have, everybody is really between forty five and fifty five thousand dollars. I'm guessing that most people are going to come in closer to the fifty five thousand dollar range, but that's just my speculation. So don't take my word for that. Okay, so then this histogram just kind of shows you, this is your distribution. It's a typical thing we do in statistical analysis where you kind of see the normal distribution of things, the normal bell curve. And so then down below, I thought, okay, we're looking at the median budget by country and the overall distribution so we can get an idea about maybe what people are going to pay. But what about the estimate? So when you fill out your data, what you have is all of the features that you're choosing. And what I wanted to see was how does your budget compare to the pricing model essentially from model three tracker.info and, and is there a big uh, gap there? So you can see down here, if you look at Sweden, for example, they have a healthy about $4,000 difference, which means that on average or not on average, on median, uh, they are estimating that they're going to pay around $56,000 USD. Now, the estimate, the median estimate for Sweden is only at $52,000. So, uh, most likely they'll be pleasantly surprised, right? They probably won't go too far over that if at all. Then, as you go down this list, what you can see is all the way at the bottom, folks in Portugal, and granted, there's only four entries here, so it's not a really robust population or sample. There are $45,000 for the median estimate, but only $24,000 for the median budget. So that means that a lot of people are going to be upset because there's about a $20,000 gap there. Now, who knows? Again, if we had much more data, I'm sure uh, a lot of these numbers wouldn't be so dramatic. But because we don't have a ton, and that's part of why I'm doing this video is to get you if you're in Portugal or any of these other places. And I've only listed ones here where I have entries, right? So I don't have um, a lot of them. So when you go there, you can enter those things and they'll pop up here. Um, and then we'll update this data as we go. So I wanted to show you how to make it a bit more interactive too. So let's say uh, that I'm in Europe and I get maybe about 15 to 20% of the people watching these videos are from Europe. Well, I can go to my map and I can click on the little icon there and start typing Europe. I can then click on that and it automatically zooms in for me. So then I'm zoomed in. Now I can get a much better sense of, you know, wherever you are at in the world, whatever region you're in, or you can search for a specific country as well. Then I can actually click on these things. Let's say I click on Norway. And you can see that the histogram to the right, the distribution updated, as well as the chart down below. When I uncheck that, it removes the filter. So I wanted to make this interactive and a bit more interesting than just looking at a couple different charts, especially since when you go back to the world view of the map, it's really hard to see, you know, like what is this one that's New Zealand? Okay, this is Virgin Islands. You also can directly just click on any of these. So let's say I wanted to click on the United States. It'll also filter and update the viz as well. So the last piece, there's two more things for interactive and ways to use this. One is to go up to the regions in the top right and you can actually filter that out. So if I wanna go down to just North America, I can click on that. And this one is interesting because when you filter using this, the color changes. If you recall, when I had all here, Canada was blue because they had a low estimate, 39,000. But when I remove everything except North America, there's only three countries to compare here. They're actually you know, much closer to the United States and Mexico than, uh, than the rest of the world. So a couple different ways to interact with your data there. And then down below, you can do the same. So if I wanna click on United States down here, you'll see it'll update the map instantly as well as the histogram. So there you have it, my budget analysis of the Model 3 data, my guess, most people are gonna pay around 55,000 USD. Uh, if you disagree or you don't have your data in there and you wanna help us do this analysis, please go to model3tracker.info, enter your options, your budgets, your location, and then we'll come back and revisit this. And as well as I have a few more takes on this data that I wanna to present to you coming up soon. So thanks for watching. And if you are on Patreon and you're a supporter of ours, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, also, leave comments and questions there and I will attend to them before any of the other YouTube stuff. You see, on YouTube, we get, on, on Teslanomics, we get about two million views or minutes of watch time per month and we get maybe about 500,000 people every month watching our videos. That's a lot. And only maybe about 8% or less are actual subscribers. So what that means is that 
there's a lot of comments and there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of people throwing stuff in there that really just kind of gets lost. And if you are a supporter and a subscriber of this and you want to have a more direct connection with us, please go to patreon.com slash teslanomics or teslanomics.co slash patreon. They'll link to the same place. And you can consider pledging some amount every time we do a video. And then by because of that, you will get more direct access. You get behind the scenes footage. You can get your name in the credits. We can do all kinds of fun stuff there that you just can't do on YouTube because YouTube is just such an open thing where literally hundreds of thousands of people are coming here and kind of um, enjoying the videos, which I love, which is great. And a lot of them do join us. But some of them uh, are kind of muddying up the community we're trying to build. And I would rather do that on a place like Patreon on where it is more uh, private and more direct. So uh, go there and check that out. Again, that's patreon.com slash teslanomics. And I hope to hear from you soon there, as well as I hope to see your data here on model3tracker.info. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.